Let's look at the effects on the endocrine system and on hormone concentrations within the blood of a bout of aerobic exercise. Specifically, we're looking at three hours of cycling at 65% of VO2 max. So it's a sort of moderate to vigorous bout of exercise here. We have time on the x-axis and percent change of the various hormones being shown here on the y-axis. We also are going to be discussing additional hormones that aren't on this graph in the tables on each side of the graph. When we start aerobic exercise, we're going to have a near immediate increase in several hormones. Uh, a couple of them are going to be the norepinephrine and epinephrine, which can be both released by the sympathetic neurons directly on cells of the body, and it can be released as an endocrine hormone by the adrenal gland. So these can be both hormones and nor, uh, neurotransmitters. We also have an immediate increase in glucagon. Uh, remember that it's going to increase blood sugar. We have a decrease in insulin uh, release from the pancreas, which is going to stop uh, blood sugar from dropping and go the blood glucose from going into the cells. We have an increase in cell sensitivity to insulin, which isn't a change in a hormone concentration, but it's a change in hormone action. We also have an increase in GLUT4 uh, transport to the cell surface. This is going to be a, a, another instance of something that's not a hormone changing the blood, but a, a change in how our body is handling hormones and handling the systems uh, that are typically controlled by hormones. GLUT4 is the receptor that brings glucose into the cell. We have, after about 30 minutes or more, an increase in cortisol, an increase in aldosterone, an increase in antidiuretic hormone, or ADH. Each of these hormones has different functions. A lot of these hormones are going to increase glycogenolysis and glycolysis in the liver and the muscle. This is going to increase the amount of glucose leaving the liver and entering the bloodstream, and also increase the amount of glucose being used by the muscle. The changes in norepinephrine, epinephrine, glucagon, and insulin that I mentioned are all going to be stimulating this. We have an increase in blood pressure and heart rate and stroke volume from the norepinephrine and also from epinephrine. We have an increase in glucose uptake into the exercising muscle from these changes in the sensitivity of insulin as well as the change in how GLUT4 is being translocated to the cell or the outside of the cells. We have uh, sodium sparing from the aldosterone, and we have water sparing from uh, the antidiuretic hormone, the ADH. Looking at the graph here, you can see cortisone does take some time to really ramp up. Again, it's starting typically around 30 minutes is where you're going to see that uh, elevate, and it will go down over time after that. The other hormones I mentioned, so we have glucagon in green, the red is the norepinephrine, the goldish yellow color is the epinephrine. They're going to increase over time. Here we see blood glucose going up over time until eventually we, we lose backup supplies of blood glucose from the liver. Uh, that's not a hormone, but it is something that a lot of these hormones are going to be acting on. If we think after exercise, so 30 to 45 minutes after you've stopped exercising, we're still going to have high norepinephrine and epinephrine cortisol and we now also have high growth hormone and high testosterone levels. Uh, these are all going to help with the recovery from that exercise bout. So the high growth hormone and testosterone are going to specifically be helping with the tissue repair and growth, think muscle repair. The, there's also an increase in lipolysis, which is fat breakdown, so that increases the usage of fat to decrease the strain on the remaining glucose levels of the body. So all of these hormones up here, except for the testosterone, are going to contribute to that. As you can see here, uh, a lot of these hormones are going to increase 100%, maybe up to 200, maybe up to 250% if you're looking at epinephrine over a long period of time. There is a massive increase in hormones with continuous intense aerobic exercise. The intensity of the exercise is going to be linked to how much hormone is released. So greater intensity and greater duration, typically a greater amount of hormone is going to be released regardless of which of these hormones you're looking at, um, with the exception of something like cortisol that does come back down over time. This hormone response is going to do a lot of things for us. Uh, a few, just, just to name a few here, it's going to increase the availability of glucose to fuel the exercise. It's going to increase the cardiac work to better perfuse the body with blood and oxygen and nutrients. And it's going to prevent, prevent dehydration and electrolyte imbalance, thinking specifically about the aldosterone and antidiuretic hormone. I'm going to go into how some of these hormones are going to do these things as well as other things in future videos. So make sure to watch those as well.